We've got new Inter-Miami ticket pricing, American player, Miami American player, and players and coaching rumors up next. I am your host, Peter Brown, and this is Football Miami TV Local News. This week, we are talking some ticket pricing because it was released by Inter-Miami and, you know, I don't know about you, but I think some people are a little upset that it was a, a, a little expensive. Uh, but if we've got a graph here I want to show you where this was put together by a fan or a reporter in uh, Nashville, and his name is on the graph. Uh, you could see in this graph we are right in line with Orlando and Nashville, a little more on the upper side of the scale, but uh, you know, we're not the highest priced. If that's what you were wondering, and this is this uh, graph is based off of supporters pricing because it's really difficult to do the pricing on club seats and all these other seats because every stadium, every team has their own unique kind of uh, rules and you know the way they handle that. But the supporter section is pretty consistent. So for the supporter section in in South Florida in Fort Lauderdale in 2020. If you want to sit there, it's going to cost you $425 per ticket for the year. To me, that's really not bad. That ends up being uh, $25 a ticket. Not too bad. Now, you know, those of us that have been watching soccer in South Florida for so long, maybe got used to some of the cheaper prices because we were going to see the Strikers, we're going to see Miami FC, we're going to see all these other lower level teams. But this is not the old MLS. This is the new MLS where, you know, uh, it, there's a little more money, a little more money in, uh, involved. They want to bring in bigger name players. We're going to pay for it as fans. So going deeper into this, we can also look at this graph from Inter Miami's website, where you can see again, $425 for the supporter section, the East upper sideline, which is the section, uh, that would be in the sun, uh, for most games, uh, that are, you know, unless it's in the evening. Those seats will cost you anywhere from 510 to 595, depending on where you're sitting on the sideline. You know, I assume more in the middle section will be around the 595, and more on the ends will be your 510. Uh, the west side is uh, that's that's where the money's being being made. Those are close to three thousand uh, dollars, two thousand nine hundred and seventy-five dollars to be in the club seats. Club seats are going to be pretty sweet. Uh, and you're in the shade, and you're going to get uh, some nice perks. I believe there was free food and uh, maybe some beverages. So nice, nice uh, package there for those that can afford uh, those club seats. And I, from everything we've heard, those club seats are going really, really fast. And then in the west, uh, on the, say, 10, 20-yard lines, a little further out, those are a little more reasonable, anywhere from 765 to 1,360 per season per ticket. So if you're talking about buying three tickets, you know, in the supporter section, you're talking over $1,200. Again, for an entire year, I don't think that's too bad. Uh, I myself will be deciding on. I've already put my deposit down, and I put my deposit down for three tickets in the supporter section. But as I talk to my family. Uh, they aren't that excited about sitting in the supporter section. We may end up sitting somewhere in the east side, more in that upper side, in that yellow area where um, it's it's a little cheaper. It's uh, so and and you know you'll be closer to the uh, the overhang, so it'll be uh, in the shade and it'll be real nice. So that's what you know. Well, I, I have that decision to make myself as to where I want to sit. If I sit in that more 510 area, I could sit closer to the supporter section, still get that feeling, but uh, not be in all the craziest craziness that a teenage uh, daughter of mine does not necessarily want to sit in. And I want her to go to the games. I want her to have fun. So we'll see about that. But again, let's go back to that graph and look at Sporting, sporting KC <clears throat> in the supporter section. They're at the highest. They're at 540 per um, season per ticket. So for the season, you're going to pay 540 for the entire season. Real Salt Lake is a complete opposite end at 280. Now this isn't taking into account, you know, the cost of living. Certain areas are going to cost more, so therefore the prices are going to be more. But 280, man, that's a bargain for uh, Real Salt Lake supporters. So 
What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on the ticket pricing? Have you put your deposit down? And I'm curious, have those people, have those ticket reps called you about uh, uh, securing your seat? I haven't gotten my call yet. Okay, now on to Georgia Costa. Georgia Costa is our first American South Florida born uh, player here for Inter Miami. He is a 19 year old player. Inter Miami here is again banking on young talent that they hope can be developed and possibly sold. Uh, so he's our first US player, Miami native. He spent some time at Weston FC. So uh, same, you know, where a lot of our, 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 train, our academy coaches are, came from is where he came from as well. Weston FC has a great track record at uh, creating and growing some amazing talent. He's considered to be one of the most promising playmakers in the U.S. youth, you know, U23, U19 system. He recently got a call up for the U23. So Jason Christ knows him well, which you figure has to play into the decision of Inter Miami getting this guy. You know they had to talk to Jason since Jason is on Inter Miami staff. I'm sure he played a part in this player. Uh, I, I imagine that he is a player that will likely play on the bench unless, hey, he shows really well. We don't, we don't really know yet uh, what, he can, what he could do. He's currently playing for Austin Bold FC in the USL Championship. So it's curious to see where, what, how, what kind of talent he will bring to Inter Miami. He did play for Boca Juniors' second team, but he really couldn't break through into the, into the lineup. So he was on the squad. I don't know how much he really actually played. He couldn't break through. So exciting, young talent, American talent, and I'm excited about this. I have no problem with all the... Uh, uh, Latin talent that makes complete sense for South Florida. Hey, but I'm happy to see some American future talent. And if he truly is one of the most promising playmakers, it'll be exciting to see him grow here in Miami. Now, moving on to some rumors. Now, this is a big rumor that everybody has picked up on. Tony Evans of The Independent is reporting that David Silva is uh, coming to Miami. And we talked about this last week when we, we showed a list of players at the end of their contracts that are 30 plus. And I mentioned that Davi Silva would be one of the ones I would be interested in uh, to see. Everybody is talking that as if this is a done deal. Of course, he would join Inter Miami in the summer. So we would have to play the half of the season without him. He's a 33 year old Spaniard. He's played with a national team, obviously, of Spain. He's been with Manchester City since 2010, attacking midfielder. I'm telling you guys things that you already know. I understand. But he is a proven winner, having won uh, a World Cup, two European Championships, four Premier League titles, two FA Cups, and four League Cups. A lot of people uh, feel like he could be the best uh, midfielder in the entire EPL and especially in the last 10 years and yes he is 33 but he still has so much talent left there I don't see uh, any concern about age when it comes to um, David Silva and I'm curious where what my friend Kartik Krishnayer who is the biggest Man City fan that I know I'm curious Kartik what you think of David Silva coming to Inter Miami this is a player I think you could build the entire squad around. Imagine David Silva playing in the attacking mid, feeding balls to Cavani all day long. Pellegrini on the wing coming up with, uh, with his youth. And uh, Carranza also playing up top alongside Pellegrini, getting balls fed to him by David Silva. And then uh, McCoon behind David Silva playing that defensive mid. It sounds good on paper. Let's hope it actually comes... Uh, to fruition. Um, you know, another thought about David Silva is that he might be a more realistic pick than, say, Messi. Although Messi is not out of the question, but I got a feeling he's staying in, in, in Barcelona and going to become a lifelong Barcelona player. But you never know. Another rumor that's popping up is Sergio Romero. He's a 33 year old Argentine goalkeeper. TNT Sports is reporting that 
he is coming to Miami. And he, oh, he's a national team uh, keeper for Argentina. He is the Manchester United backup keeper. He has not really broken through as the starting keeper. This would give him an opportunity to be a starting, getting a consistent starting position. I'll be honest though, I'm not in favor of this. I don't like the idea of hiring foreign um, goalkeepers. I think goalkeeping is one of those positions that the United States excels at. I don't want to waste a foreign spot, an expensive player, uh, to a goalkeeper. I'd rather bring in an American who can catch. I mean, Americans, we can catch things, right? So I think there's got to be plenty of American goalkeeping talent that we can go after instead of looking at foreign players. So I'm not a fan. Now, we were talking last week that we need a coach, and it's looking like Santiago Solari is the front runner. Carlos Suarez from BN Sports is reporting that he is the leading candidate for the head coach. With so many Latin players coming into our team, so many Argentinians and so forth, it makes sense to have someone like Solari who can really speak to them and understand them. You know, he's currently unemployed, having been sacked at Real Madrid, where he has spent a lot of years. You know, he was part of the uh, Real Madrid youth uh, team second team and of course the first team so he's been there he was with Real Madrid from 2013 to 2019 so he's really got that coaching philosophy of Real Madrid not a bad philosophy to have here in South Florida with so much youthful players young talent coming here and you know if you look at all the signings so far they're all 19 and 20 year olds that have been officially signed so we can definitely use a coach that has experience with these young players. So it starts making a lot more sense when you start thinking about that. Also, something to consider is that Solari went to college in New Jersey at Stockton University in the mid-90s before becoming a professional player. So I'm assuming he's fluent in English. Makes sense, fluent in English and Spanish, perfect for South Florida. So starting to make a lot more sense. What do you guys think of Santiago Solari and I know I promised you guys last week that we would do a Lockhart report and we did but you're gonna have to wait till tomorrow because I've decided that we're gonna start putting those Lockhart updates in their own separate videos so we can spend a little more time and go in a little more depth and really looking at all the construction that's happening and getting excited about that so look for the construction update on Tuesday that wraps up the news. A lot going on here in with Inter Miami. So, thanks so much for watching, guys. Make sure to check out Ed's videos whenever he puts them up in Spanish. And uh, so, you got to stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we will see you next week.